Oftentimes, in order to identify an anonymous person online, we are required to subpoena Google. Google is a parent company that controls Gmail, Blogger, and Google My Business, along with multiple other website applications. Google will not release any information about a user without a valid subpoena or a court order. The question becomes, what information does Google provide in response to one of these documents? I'm going to show today an example of something that Google turned over to us in a real case. Google normally alerts a user and provides them 21 days in order to file a motion to quash the subpoena. If they do not receive the motion to quash, they will then turn over the information as long as the judge approves the request. As you can see, Google will provide the username, the email address, and if the user puts a recovery email address, they will provide that as well. Google stores the creation date of the account and generally will store the terms of service IP address. If a user puts a text message application or their telephone number into the account, Google will provide this as well in response to a subpoena. They will also provide the last login date and they will provide an IP address log of every time the user has logged in and logged out of the account. One thing to note is that if a person does not actively log out of their Gmail, and what do I mean by this? If you log into your Gmail account and just shut down the browser, or if you're logged out because you remain idle for too long, Google does not store that additional IP address. As you can see in this situation, the user only logged in but never logged out of their account, which is the only reason we see one IP address. This information is very powerful in identifying cyber harassers and cyber stalkers along with people who have sent out defamatory emails and put revenge porn online.